On the engine real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to Nightwise.com, the one and only podcast with hacks, tips, and tweaks for cross-platform geeks. Uh, my name is Nightwise. I'll be your host on this daily, I hope, well, regular. Well, let's call it not, not, let's call it regular. Let's not call it daily. Regular. Regular uh, attempt at doing a video podcast while doing something that I do every day for quite a quite a few hours. Uh, doing my commute. I used to, uh, I used to, and I still do podcasts from the car. So this is kind of the same thing. Uh, basically, there is one difference. I still use the same earbuds, so sound quality is going to be the same. But um, I've got my iPhone 6s Plus uh, mounted uh, on um, a bracket uh, at the dashboard of the car. So every time I hit a speed bump, you guys will get a mini earthquake. So sorry about that. Um, daily blog or regular, regular video blog, regular, um, for the simple reason that um, I have uh, so little time to produce content these days, uh, running a business, uh, doing a full-time gig as a subcontractor, uh, and uh, trying to, to do a podcast as well, and being cross-platform gig. Uh, is something that is quite time consuming. That's why I try to squeeze some productivity into the moments during the day that I hate the most. These moments where I have to drive and be in traffic and, ooh, actually I'm speeding. Gotta be, gotta be careful here. Um, just a little. I'm running into some uh, roadworks, so I have to take care of uh, my speed. Now, um, I wanted to, to find a place to, you know, do some creative stuff during the moments that I drive. So um, I just wanted to tell you what tech I've been working on lately and uh, what what I'm doing to, you know, geek out. And one of the things I got working yesterday evening in between um, two projects was that I uh, got the chance to re-deploy uh, my Raspberry Pi. Now, I like to read a lot. Uh, I like to read books. I don't watch a lot of TV. Uh, I, I just watch the occasional Netflix show, but that's about it. For the rest, I'm, I'm, I'm really a reading kind of guy. And one of the things that I cherish dearly is, of course, my ebook collection, which resides on my server at home. I access these ebooks and I convert these ebooks using um, the Calibre application, which is a cross-platform ebook management application, which if you haven't tried it out, do that. Uh, it lets you manage your ebooks, uh, get metadata, um, convert them to all kinds of crazy formats, and it lets you run a web server so you can access your ebook collection from whatever device that it comes equipped with a browser. Now, I had figured this out and had been using my uh, Calibre collection, uh, my ebook collection and the Calibre application as kind of an internal web server that I would go to using my phone or using my uh, iPad or using my Kindle to download apps, uh, but perhaps books, to download books. And it was great. It was this online library that has a searchable interface. You can search uh, according to date added. You can search according to to author. Uh, you can search according to title. So it's like like really an, an, an interactive library of, of your own ebooks. So I had that running, um, and I decided, you know, I'm gonna move this off of my my main Linux server and uh, move it somewhere else where I can easily access it, perhaps from even outside my network. Now, I have divided up my network in two segments. I have the ISP's router, and then I have a network segment, and then I have my router, and then I have my, my, my own uh, private LAN network where the infrastructure of my, of my company resides. So this, this, this zone in between my ISP's router and my router is kind of like my demilitarized zones where I do all of my port forwarding. There's almost no port forwarding done to the internal part of, of my network. And this is where I kind of, you know, put up all my experimental servers and stuff. So um, one of the things I thought, you know, wouldn't it be great to have kind of a machine running there that would do this? And a couple of technologies came together. Um, a couple of months ago, two months ago, I bought a micro SD, uh, no, not a micro SD, just a USB stick. So this, this yay high 
um, with with a, a capacity of 128 gigabytes. And those gigabytes, those you that USB stick, I put it, uh, put a, uh, my entire music collection on it, stuffed it in the in the USB port of my car, and kind of had you know all the music with me that I wanted to have with me. Um, so I didn't always have to synchronize stuff to my phone. Now I don't listen to music a lot. We use it when we went on holiday. We did a road trip, and after that, the stick was just you know sitting there. So I thought, hmm, that's a good idea. Um, why don't I take that stick and shove it into my Raspberry Pi 3, which I still have lying around, which isn't doing anything, and make a server out of it. And that way I have a Raspberry Pi, low powered, um, and I have enough storage to actually do something, because the standard 32 gig SD cards, iffy, uh, when it comes to, you know, really doing stuff on them and using them as kind of a server. And I thought, if I put the stick and the Pi together, and I move over my Calibre library, I can set up an externally accessible Calibre server. So that's what I did. Um, I downloaded a no IP client for Raspberry Pi, so I have a DIN DNS, Dynamic DNS uh, host name. So when my external IP changes, it changes along with that, and I don't have to remember my IP. Um, and um, I set up Calibre. I activated the web server, and a little bit of a downside there, I couldn't lock it down with a password or a username, um, because then Calibre would crash. And I've taken a look at some of the, of the, of the uh, bug reports, and the developer says, well, if you're downloading it from the libraries, I'm not supporting the libraries. If you have any issues, here's the latest version, install it yourself. Tried that, Python script, didn't really work, didn't put a lot of time in it. I thought, like, you know what, I'll do security through obscurity and just basically, you know, hawk it up there without a username and a password. The only thing that's there is about 6,000 ebooks that I found somewhere. Um, legal or illegal, I leave it in between. And, uh, you know, you can't mass download them. You can just download one ebook at a time and it's like zero bandwidth. I don't care if somebody finds it. I'll just keep keep good close look on the logs. But I set that up. And uh, what I also set up with uh, was a transmission client. So I could download, uh, you know, torrents from distributions and stuff that I wanted to throw at it. And uh, that also has a web interface. So I got that working as well. So now I can, you know, connect home with, with whatever mobile device I'm using and just, you know, hit up the, um, the Calibre library or, or add a, a, a torrent file to, to my transmission downloads. And it all goes to this 128 uh, gigabyte SSD card. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, on my home server, which is also a Linux server, which is behind the firewall, my firewall, I'm going to pull in an SSH script that kind of synchronizes the directory on the Pi, which has the torrents and the uh, which has the torrents and the uh, library, and just you know synchronizes that with a local library, just so that I have a backup of all of that behind the firewall, without having to open up any ports. So probably need to get that sorted as well, because if if anything happens to the Pi and I'm managing my Calibre library on there, adding new books and stuff. I want it to be synchronized, so I've got it, you know, at home in the backups as well. Um, yeah, and and uh, it's been fun to play around with, but it was very typical of a of a trend that I feel that is going on in my life uh, these days is that I am excessively, uh, exceedingly going towards a mobile computing uh, world where my phone is becoming more and more important to interact with what I'm doing, more and more of my workflows, both as a, as a podcaster, as a geek, as an entrepreneur, uh, are going towards my phone even more than before, and that my iPad is also taking up a, a fairly important role. So I'm, I'm actually demanding different things of the technology that I use. Uh, I want to have... Um, stuff like, you know, that's accessible, not only via desktop, but also via uh, other means. So that brings me to, to the topic that I'm, I'm kind of doing this for, is I have been kind of jonesing for a new iPad. I read a lot, I annotate a lot, and so far I've been annotating on the Kindle, 
where I, you know, when I read a book, I just, you know, highlight the important things with my finger. You know, the it's kind of like a magic marker, and you can do that on the uh, Kindle app on the iPad as well, or you can do that in iBooks and stuff. And I, I've always found that to really um, understand or 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 grasp or remember. Uh, whatever I'm reading, you know, doing the magic marker thing really helps. And I thought, you know what, I'll do, I'm, I'm one of these kids who had, you know, when you opened up my textbooks from school, you needed shades like these because it was all yellow magic marker. That's why I still wear shades, probably. Um, so I'm a magic marker guy and I magic mark all my ebooks. So more and more I've been doing this and my iPad mini, God bless it, fantastic little device. It's kind of going long on the tooth. Actually not. I just saw the new iPad Pro and I went like, oh, wow, I got to have this. Uh, so I've been thinking up excuses to get one. So uh, lately I've been playing around with, um, you know, getting one of these iPads Pros. But I want to really, really tell myself that I need this. I need this. And being on the road... You know, you cannot accentuate your mobile lifestyle more by actually recording your bloody video podcast in the in the in the driving car. Um, being on the road a lot has really made me see that um, uh, these iPads, these mobile devices, really work for me, and I need to adjust my workflows to make them happen to really get the most out of the stuff that I'm buying. Not that, you know, you have this fancy iPad and then you want to do something and then you still you need a laptop. So the classic the classic mistake that's been made here is that, oh yeah, I'm going to approach my iPad like a laptop and I'm going to make it do things like a laptop. So I'm going to try to put laptop software software on there and I'm going to buy one of these, one of these bulky cases with a keyboard because it looks like a laptop. If you're buying an 800 euro if you're spending 800 euros on something that you want to act as a laptop, then buy, then buy a bloody laptop. Don't buy a tablet and complain that it doesn't work like a laptop. Either you adapt to the mobile platform of the, of the, of the iPad, of the tablet, or you buy a laptop. You cannot ask the tablet to be something that it's not. A laptop isn't a tablet either. We've tried the Lenovo Yoga. We tried. It doesn't work. The Surface Pro, kind of getting air, but you don't really use it like a tablet. Not really. It's too heavy, too bulky, and the interface just isn't there. So a, a tablet's a tablet, a laptop's a laptop. What you have to do, if you want to do this, and what I'm going to try to do in the next couple of days, weeks, is adjust my workflows to match mobile lifestyle. And the thing that I've come up with is that my iPad should be a mobile staging area for my productivity. So I want to be connected to the information that I have. I want to enrich that information. I want to uh, change that information. I want to add to that information. And then I want to export or, or push that information that workflow off of the iPad and into the waiting arms of a PC, which does what it does best, you know, finish the job, the, 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 the markup, the communication, you know, everything. And that is, that philosophy has started to, you know, you know, turn around in my head where I go like, how am I going to do this? And then how could I approach this? And, and what could I do? And, and how would this work? And I've come up with, with quite a, quite a few ideas. And for some of them, I had to let go of my cross-platform. I want to have everything synchronized on every possible device. On every possible platform, I kind of had to, had to let that go a little bit. And also, the um, I want to be able to do everything I do offline. Because not, that's not really going to happen. And... That being tied together with with the way I look at the iPad has really, you know, started me thinking about doing some very interesting workflows. And I want to share those with you over the next couple of days or, or episodes. And, you know, just, you know, 
talk about one or the other and then see where we go. Meanwhile, I'm almost, well, Holmes, big word, I'm almost at my next client. Um, and um, yeah, that we'll see. Uh, so I'll keep you guys posted. And this is also a na- nice test of doing some video podcasting in the car. Um, show notes, uh, well, show notes, there aren't any show notes. Um, YouTube comments of the vilest sorts can be uh, posted below the video. I'm, I'm looking forward to your, to your feedback. Okay, talk to you guys next time. Bye.